this course, we define leadership as a process of influence that delivers direction, alignment and commitment. We asked leaders in development to share their thoughts on this. And the other thing that I liked about him was that he was able to make everyone in the organisation buy into the vision of the organisation. So even if the, the organisation had departments, when it came to fundraising, he didn't have to ask others from other or departments to assist others, we just did it because we bought into that vision and we all knew what our end goal was. So it wasn't about, oh, this is not my department, so I don't have to put an input. Uh, but he, he didn't have to ask. We just gave our input because he, was, he motivated us in that way. I work under a very good leader who was able to actually motivate all staff members to be able to make impact. It was a newly developed unit, a call center. And as a call center, you know, there are a lot of processes that has to go with uh, meeting the key performance indicators. In terms of staff, we have to work uh, different schedules. But here was the case, performance was not only measured on individual basis, but as a team. So teamwork was very paramount. This kind of leader was able to help us to be able to get the required skills for us to buy into the vision that he has for the department. And as a result, all staff members were willing to sacrifice, to go the extra mile for the realization of the unit's performance as required by the organization. That is the kind of leadership experience I have seen. And since then, it has been a kind of a benchmark for me to aspire to that kind of leadership. I have seen firsthand um, a very, very complicated um, group of people who represent their respective institutions. I shouldn't have said complicated, I should have said complex, a complex web of UN organizations, all of which are devoted to development and are organized in what is called the UN Development Group. It's a little bit like the World Bank Group or, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a relatively loose but, but yet well-legislated set series of agencies, UNICEF and UN Women and the World Food Program and uh, the UNFPA and UNIDO and FAO and uh, uh, the, the World Health Organization and so forth <coughs> who are chaired by the administrator of UNDP, Ms. Helen Clark. Now, th this is a, a typical situation of leadership that indeed required um, a, a, a direction because it's not obvious um, that we all do development or we all support our member states uh, and mobilize resources and and uh, define our policies and strategies in the same direction. So direction was needed. Certainly alignment was needed. If something has been said about the UN is that it is, it is not very coherent and it is rather fragmented and therefore alignment was necessary. Uh, um, and, and, and perhaps commitment is the part uh, where, where th that needs a nuance because uh, every single agency and principle of agency is obviously committed to their cause. The commitment had, however, to be sharpened to the joint work, to the working together, to the delivering as one, to the, to the one UN concept. And, and that is where, uh, answering your question, I have uh, uh, I do agree with the, with the statement that leadership is a process of influence that delivers direction, alignment and, and commitment. I think leadership as a process of influence really resonates with me because I'm not in a um, formal leadership position per se in my current role. Uh, as an education officer at UNICEF, you know, um, we have the chiefs above us and then there's the deputy representatives and the representatives. So for my own style of leadership, I, uh, that really resonates with me, the process of influencing people to where you want to go. 
For example, I'm currently managing a program for our social and emotional learning, um, learning pilot project, and it's to help parents and caregivers of children that are left behind by migration. So parents might be working in factories in the cities and their grandparents are looking after the children in the villages. And it's really to help enhance their social and emotional learning. Now, how we're doing that in terms of a process of influence and leadership style is I know it takes, um, there were three, there were three strands of this style of leadership that the theory was saying, which is direction, um, alignment, and commitment. And in terms of commitment, um, well, it's a huge issue in China that children are being affected by this migration and there are um, social issues. And so we're all committed. I think everyone on the team is very committed. And you'll see that a lot in development work with the mission-driven um, work, that everyone is committed to helping and working on this program and with alignment, because there are a lot of different actors involved, we have not only our government partners, the Ministry of Education, we have um, technical partners from America and also in universities here and someone focusing on the, the um, online aspects of it because it's a new area with media and with um, with innovation, there are at least four different partners involved apart from UNICEF and getting them in alignment um, using this kind of process of influence it can be a little difficult, but it takes coordination and communication. And luckily, we've had a lot of previous relationships and work with some of the partners. That's one of the good things. Um, finally, on um, direction, I think because we have clear uh, deliverables on how we want to go about achieving this app for the parents and it's aligned with our um, overall work scope on this social emotional learning program it means that all the three points the direction alignment and commitment are covered look I, I mean when I hear that question about leadership as a process of influence I, I, I'm kind of um, get that and agree that, that in the, well, let's just say I come from a perspective of complexity, which I imagine a lot of your people you're interviewing would say. So, you know, I work from a community perspective and I see community as a complex system that's nested in other complex systems. So, you know, what, what is it the leadership can do in the context of a complex system is a very vexed question for any form of leadership and particularly in development because in development we're obviously dealing with issues of community capability, capacity, um, existing forms of leadership. So, so you know, the, what, what is that the, the question of influence and, and that definition delivers, something about delivering direction and alignment and commitment and I think that's a, a good aspiration. But from a complexity perspective, I think the only, my, my view is that leadership is about hosting conversations or creating structures that enable the possibility of alignment, direction, commitment. But I'm absolutely clear that the leaders can't deliver those things. Leaders can only create the conditions or structures that enable the possibility of a community or a group of people finding their way in alignment, finding some form of a commitment and accountability to one another to do something. So the DAC model, as I see it, is really good because it allows us to see leadership as an activity or action, as you would like to call it. So let me give you an example. Back in 2010, in Pakistan, there was a huge flood and we were doing this, starting this new untried project called Cash for Work. The idea was to engage rural farmers into temporary livelihood up until their you know, conventional livelihoods are revived. It was a complex project because we had not tried it before. And the vision of the project was that people will have dignified livelihood for some time. Soon enough, we at the management realized that 
because of the compl complexities and so many activities that leads to that vision, I mean, we had to register the people, we had to make them make them understand what's going on. There was financial reporting, there was technical reporting, and they were working on their village schemes and so on and so forth. So what we did was to make sure that our team was always connected to the vision, we, we took some steps. We made all of the reporting of the project around that vision. So instead of saying how many people are registered for the project, we would just say how many people are one step closer to a decent living. Or when we wanted to say how many people have received cash through that project, we would say how many people are you know, getting a dignified livelihood. So in this way, we were always make, making sure that everybody is connected to the bigger vision instead of you know, kind of getting lost in the trivial details. Very important. When you have a vision, it really serves as a binding force, as I like to call it. And it really uh, allows us to you know, get aligned with the, with the project vision. And you know, it also helps cohesion, with cohesion. So yeah, vision is really important.